Awesome. Okay, so let's just start it off with uh, saying thank you for actually doing this. No problem. <laughs> it's at all. amazing. Yeah. No, no, so we're you. here live. <laughs> well, not really live since yeah. uh, <laughs> we live. Right yeah. Here. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm the Helix, and you're, this is a green light radio on 95.3 FM. We're chilling with Charlie Tuna here in the house. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start it out with a, where does the name come from? Wow. Okay. Um, my name comes from, uh, I was about five years old. My father, I'm a junior, like from my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, and me. Right? So um, my father's nickname when he was young was Pee Wee because he was so skinny and uh he didn't want to call me little Pee Wee. i was like five six years old mm -hmm. he was watching tv when i just remember him watching uh the star kids commercial and going oh that's funny i'm gonna start calling you charlie tuna all right <laughs> i just remember that little so years pass of him calling me tuna for years years yeah, in front of friends and i'm like i'm thinking it's just like a family name you know like your mom might call you some silly name. You're like, mom, don't call me that in front of my friends. Kind of, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was kind of like that. Yeah. So I guess when I when I started to to when I decided to you know try to rap and stuff like that, I kind of wanted a moniker that was um, memorable, so to speak. But I ran through a bunch of different names and stuff like that. And um, I was in Los Angeles, and my father came to visit, and he called me Tuna in front of a bunch of my friends, and they started laughing like ah, and I was like, damn. That might be it, man. So I just said, forget it. I'm going to just embrace my my family name in there. It has been. That's some good history. <laughs> it's weird, but it's cool. You know what I mean? So. It's a little bit of you, you know? Yeah. Keep it in there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's true. Great. Um, so how did you first get started in hip-hop? Okay. Um. Wow. Okay. My first uh, experience in hip-hop was... <laughs> Around 81, 82, um, I, I could draw and stuff. And, and a friend of mine had moved to Chicago from um, the Bronx and used to tell me about painting and, you know, graffiti and this and that third. And I was like, oh, I, I just got really interested in it. He was showing me pictures and stuff. And I was like, man, I want to do that, you know. So I would, like, follow on around. I met a bunch of people in Chicago that painted, and I started doing that. But that was kind of before I knew – what hip hop was, so to speak, you know what I mean? Like it being defined as hip hop, you know, I just knew we was painting and stuff and there was some cool, you know, like music coming out of New York, you know what I mean? Whether, whether it was, it was, um, you know, like the, the, um, rappers delight or like, you know, grandmaster flash and things like that. It was just this new movement coming through, and I lived in Chicago where it was like house music just ran everything. So it was like, eh. you know, if you if you weren't into that to the fullest, then you know you was kind of outcasted. So I felt like the you know the, all, all of the rap that was coming out, and, you know, what I'm saying eventually break dancing and DJ and all of these things that defined themselves as hip hop. I immediately took to it because I was kind of like anti what was going on at the house. But now since I got older, I, I enjoy a lot of house music too, just by digging back in my past going i did like that so you know what i mean so but yeah so i got it like i said i think it's about 81 82 was my first real like shake the can spray paint on a train kind of thing you know we used to bomb freight trains in chicago but shh, don't tell nobody secret don't yeah. tell anybody don't worry not the police at least <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have anything new in the works? Um, maybe with Oso Motley or anything mm. with J Five? Or well, uh, with Oso, we are gonna try. I, I um I did a run with them earlier this year, about three four months. It was three months, and uh, it was fun as hell. It was just cool to be reunited with them brothers again, after like eight nine years of not you know playing with them. So that was crazy. In the process, we we um, recorded a couple of songs that were cool it felt good to be able to just do that with my fellas again so um they wanted to uh they like they stopped their recording processes and wanted to reconvene sometime in the beginning of the year so i was like cool man if y'all want me to be down i'm definitely down It'd be cool to connect again so that's on that um jurassic five actually broke up about three years ago i don't know if people know that or not so i'm just putting that out there and um uh, sad day in hip-hop well Sad day in my, in my career, but at the same time, I mean, it was like, you know, one door shuts, another one opens, and yeah. hopefully a window as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's one of those sliding doors, you know? God willing. <laughs> screen even. It's been fun so far, though, I mean, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, and, you know, just the fish out of water project is really, 
me trying to go as hard as possible. That's why I got this code right now. Going hard. Going <laughs> hard. Yeah. It's for sure. Go big or go home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was going to say, the last time, I know you were at Red Rocks like a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I with the. Uh, you were there with Sound Tribe? Were you? Yeah, Sector yeah. 9. Yeah, I was with J Fire. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I, that was my first time actually seeing Sound Tribe. Crazy. Like, that was crazy. It's amazing. The like, drummer, the drummer. Dude, that dude is amazing. I know. Anyway, I know. <laughs> yeah, so that, Red Rocks is amazing. Yeah. I love that place for yeah. Um, Do you see any other artists coming up that are providing something you might consider as quality or oh, beneficial yeah. to the society? Oh, yeah. yeah, man, it's a lot of people out there that are, are coming up right now. Um, on the Rock the Bells tour alone, I, it, it was a couple of people that I got hit to that I didn't know anything about, like uh, this dude named... Um, uh, what's, the, what's the brother name? Mickey, Mickey Fax. He's pretty dope. I was like tripping on him. I, you know, he, he he's promoting. I don't know if he has a project out or not, but he just up there, just just you know, like he'll rap. He a new rap dude who got raps. You know what I'm saying? And he and he's very entertaining to watch. He was just, he wasn't. It was just simplistic. It was him and a DJ, but he was entertaining to watch. He had like a cool little charisma to him, and his rhymes was funny as hell. He's dope, right? So I, I thought that dude was dope. Um, I don't know. I, like I said, I look at the, the 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 different goods and a lot of stuff. Like okay, say people might say like Helter Skelter is like some crazy you know gangster rap group or what have you, but them dudes can rap. So I'm like you know I kind of gravitate to some of their stuff just because they inspire me to like you know get creative with the writing and stuff like that. But um, yeah. and it's a lot of people that I'm probably not naming. You know, I like Black Milk. I like. Uh, Ooh, my brother Blue in Los Angeles, um, big up to Pac Division and all those cats. I mean, it's a lot of different people that are, you know, coming out right now that I'm just happy to say I had a, a hand or a, a part of the history that brought about a lot of stuff. It feels good. Awesome. Um, so that kind of goes into this next question about uh, how do you feel and what do you think the differences are between studio albums and live shows? And uh -huh. Which do you prefer? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. There's a difference between an, uh, a studio artist and a performer. If you're both, you won the game. You know, a lot of people are, are, are good in the studio but not good on stage. A lot of people's studio work gets them so much fame and notoriety that they spend less time focusing on actually getting up there and entertaining for people. And they feel that their music should speak for them. And that, you know what I'm saying, uh, me playing a, a gang of hits left, right back to back will be, you know, it'll suffice enough for people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hey, he rocked it or she rocked it. When in actuality, sometimes it's just like, it's like I could have just bought the CD and listened to that. I didn't have to come watch you, you know what I mean? I'm I'm very, I'm very an extreme fan of people who put time into their shows, but put time into everything that they do, like the 100%, the, the whole circle, as opposed to it being just, I'm good at one thing right. and one thing only, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of facets to what we do, you know? And and performing, I was talking to my little brother, my little brother's on the tour with me, is easily 70% of what we're doing. You could be in the studio all day. It's a lot of cats that have whack songs or are not as entertaining when you listen to their record, but then you go to the show and you're like, wow, that was crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then it's vice versa, yeah. you know what I mean? Where it's like the music is dope and you go see them and you wasted your money, mm -hmm. you know, so. Totally. It's crazy. Yeah, and I think there's like a, some at those shows that, you know, the artist is actually, you know, influencing the audience in a way, yeah. like there's a connection and there's this energy that's being like passed between them that's exactly. just amazing that you just almost can't get from like a studio album, you know? Yeah, it's totally true. It's mm -hmm. totally true. I mean, some some albums um, are soundtracks to people's lives though, you know? Yeah. You're like, yo, I was, when I was <laughs> in high school or when I was in college, I was listening to that album. Totally. So they connect to that artist like that. Yeah. And a lot of the times that artist can do no wrong in their eyes, yeah. you know? <laughs> so, I mean, that, that instance is different. So. Yeah, it's so great how it can just like flip-flop around. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's awesome. 